In this video, I'm gonna share with you my top seven tips for creating a high converting website homepage. Now there's all sorts of tips and tricks and conversion principles out there. These are simply the top seven that I've used and implemented as a web designer of over a decade and now as a web design coach that a lot of my students are using that are working really well right now in web design so you can apply them to your website designs as well. We're gonna start with number one, a strong call to action. Now. The main problem that I see a lot of web designers make is that there's no call to action at all initially. So right when you load a website, you should see in the hero section, some sort of call to action that is very strong and very intentional. The other issue that I see is that a lot of web designers will have four or five different calls to actions. For example, you might have contact us, get started, learn more, book a call, and then the website user isn't quite sure what to do because there's four different things that you're telling them to do. Tell them to do one thing and make it a very strong call to action. Now let's take a some, look at some real examples here, starting with Leo with Straight Up Websites who does a great job at having a strong call to action. So we're gonna look at some real world examples here. But this is really clear. When you go to Leo's website, what can you guess the main strong call to action is? Book a call, it's very clear. It's not get started, it's not contact us, which can be a little vague. It's not anything other than book a call. It's very clear that when you go to this website, he wants people to book a call. Now let's look at Circle, which is the platform that I use for my online communities. For them, it's pretty clear. Their main thing that they want people to do is to start a free trial. So if you do have some sort of free trial or something that you offer, make sure that is the main call to action. Again, at the very beginning, at the very end of their homepage, it started trial, nothing more than that. On my site, it was a little more difficult because I have a lot of different paths that people could go down, but I know that the main thing I want people to do is to look at my courses. So that is my primary call to action. Above everything on my website that you can do, I want people to go to my courses. Now you might wonder, what if you have different customers in different areas of their journey and you wanna create like a funnel like I did? I will show you how to do this. I'm actually gonna show you this at the very end of the video to have multiple call to actions, that's gonna be a bonus tip. Now, number two, while we're all on the topic of calls to actions, you need to make sure they are assertive and not passive. Passive call to actions are typically like read more, learn more, even contact us is kind of a vague call to action. If you know exactly what you want people to do, tell them exactly what to do. Studio One Design, one of my favorite web design agencies, they have a very strong call to action, which is to speak with an expert. When you go to their website and you're not sure where to go, what to do, speaking with an expert is their main primary call to action and it's assertive. It's not get started, it's not contact us, it's speak with an expert. So I know by clicking this, I'm gonna be starting the process to talk with somebody who knows what the heck they're talking about. So great way to go. Additionally, my, my SEO gal, Michelle, with Edited by Michelle, she has a very clear call to action, which is to get a free consult. Even up here, you can, you can get a quote, but the primary call to action is free consult. So right here, very clear and assertive, get a free consult. It's not contact, it's nothing else more than just get a consult. And then my student, Jeremy, with Websites by Jeremy, his main call to action is to get a quote. So it's not, again, contact us. You can contact him, but he wants people to get a quote. That's the main call to action. Number three is to create a results-based heading. This is really tricky because when you're writing website copy, it's often easy to talk about you and what you do. And there's a time and place for that, but when you first load a website, you really want to make sure the website user sees the benefit in them and they see themselves before they move forward in the website. My student Kayla does a great job on her website saying that she builds handcrafted websites for women business owners. It's super clear, and she has a strong call to action that's assertive, so you're seeing this all come together. So it's really clear who this is for and what she does, and she even goes to the next phase of it with talking about the location that she serves as well. Great way to go. Let's jump back to Leo's site with Straight Up Web Designs. This one's also a great example of a results-based header because the main th result that he gets his clients is to fill your calendar with direct online bookings. He is working with a lot of tourism and hospitality and travel clients. So this is their main challenge. They want to fill their calendar with bookings. So if you can articulate the challenge that your clients have in a heading, your goal. That is exactly what you wanna do. For me, I saw a big jump 
in conversions on my website when I change my hero section to the result for my web design students, which is to build a dream web design business. And the result is that they get freedom and a lifestyle that they love. That is what I'm all about. Previous to this, I had this right here. I just said, hey, I'm Josh and I teach people what I've learned over a decade on how to build six figure web design businesses. But once I changed it from me to my students and their challenges, I saw a big, big jump in conversions and you will too, again, focusing on the result in your heading of your homepage. Number four, this is one of my favorites and it is a founder's note on your website homepage. This is really important because a lot of people tend to hide behind their brand. And when you go to a website, one of the biggest mistakes I see is that you don't know who the heck is behind this company or this business. Is it a solo printer? Is it one person? Or is it a hundred people? Is it a digital agency with 20 or 30 people? Who knows? So the more you can articulate who is behind the brand and ideally have some sort of personalization, particularly with like a founder's note from the CEO or from the web designer or freelancer, it'll go such a long way. For example, my student Sandy with Sandfire does a great, great job at this. You go to her website and you're not sure how big this agency might be. Again, is it 20 people? Is it just one person? But you'll find out more when you scroll down and then boom, here's Sandy and she is the CEO, the owner, the founder, whatever you want to call it. And there's a nice little personalization tip here that adds so much more life to this website. Another great example is my student Lisa here with her business where with Live Creative where they do a lot of different branding services and then you can meet the founder. So this is a great way to add some personalization if you have a brand that has a company name and you're not quite sure who is behind the brand. So generally, this is a great example. Have an image and then have a quick little blurb. And then sometimes this could link to an about page like Sandy's does, or you could keep it like this. That's just a little dash of personalization that's going to really help conversions in your website. Even if you have a big company, get a note, get a, a, a little blurb from the founder or the CEO that just speaks about the mission and what they're all about. That will go such a long way with adding personalization into your website and really will help boost conversions. Number five, I like to call this the what, who, how. Ideally, you wanna get across on your homepage what you do, who you do it for, and then how you do it, if you have some sort of process. Now, this can be easier said than done, and this could be a lot of information. Ideally, you wanna just sum it up to something concise, and then people could click to go for more information, but you definitely, on your homepage, wanna get across what do you do, your services, who you do it for, and then how you do it. There's a lot of examples of this, but let me show you my awesome, awesome student, Richard, who has a web design service of freelancers for clients all over the world. They very, very clearly state who they do designs for, and then they have their process right here and show a little bit of the results that you're gonna get and the need that you might have in order to go with them. And then they also show that instead of a typical web design freelancer or a big agency, they're right in the middle. They're kind of a small team, which is actually based off of my initial design as a freelancer when I built my web design agency, and I had something similar. I had the example of a freelancer and then the big agency where people feel like a number, my agency was always right in the middle, me and a small team. So however you can get across who you are, what you do, how you do it for clients, the better. And as far as the process goes, my student Keegan with Redefined Creative does an awesome, awesome job at showcasing his redefined website system, as he calls it. And this is genius because there's three paths that you could go down. You can kind of look at the onboarding process. So basically, you onboard, you build, and then they maintain. Those are the three big areas of how their process works. But then you can explore that process even more, which is a great way to go. So again, just the, the teaser of what's in this process. And then if I wanna find out as a customer what the building process looks like for Redefined Creative, here we go. I see it, I see the entire process. Genius, way to go, Keegan. That is the way to go. So number five, what, who, how? Number six, no surprise here, social proof. You wanna make sure that you have testimonials and any sort of social proof on your homepage. Now, you don't wanna overload your homepage with nonstop reviews and testimonials, but you also don't want to neglect those. Even if you have generally three to start with, that's fine to start. Just get three testimonials, even if you're brand new in your business, 
put those on your homepage. It's a great place to start. Ideally, I recommend adding an image and make it short. You don't want to add a small book as a testimonial. You want to keep it more of a teaser. Then you could always have a page with longer testimonials. So examples, my student April with April Ray Creative awesome website design she has. And it's very clear once you go down here that she's got some testimonials. And this is a great way to go because five stars, there's images of the actual clients. There's not, again, a massive paragraph. It's just a little blurb that's kind of highlighted, probably taken from a testimonial. But then their names are here too. It's very custom, very unique, and very intentional. So that's all I need to see as a potential client. Now on my site, I have a lot of different testimonials that I sprinkle throughout my site. Same thing here. I actually have a little bit, I probably need to condense these even a little more. So I'm going to go through and make these a little shortened like, like April's site. But I have a mix of video testimonials with a short blurb and then the actual written testimonials that again were much longer, but I just took you know snippets of them. But ideally, an image of the real client Five stars always make it look cool. And then I also recommend making the text italic with quotes. That way it looks like somebody's actually you know, mentioning it. And then if you're going to sprinkle in images and video, we'll go back to Richard's site at 10degrees.co that has a lot of good examples of like a, a video slider with testimonials that also accompany written testimonials throughout the site. So it's a great way to go. And number seven, my final tip for strong conversions on your website homepage. Although stay with me because I got a bonus one next. And that here, number seven, is to make sure you have a footer call to action. This is the most neglected conversion tip that I see for most web designers because what happens typically is you'll design a homepage and then by the time you get to the bottom, it kind of fizzles out. It's like all your attention went to the hero section and all the other sections we've gone over and then you just kind of fizzle out and you don't really put anything at the bottom of the website. But just remember, if a website user gets all the way down to the homepage, that is the perfect time to zoom up your primary call to action. So let's go back to Sandy's website with Sandfire and if we go down here, she has a really nice homepage flow, process, social proof, everything we've talked about that. And then once you get to the very bottom, there's one final call to action. Are you ready for a website that works for you? And it's highlighted here in bolded. It is a persuasive call to action. And then it's very clear, get a quote. That is her main call to action. Great way to go. Similarly, my student John over here with Graphic Kitchen, get a quote is his main call to action. We get down to his homepage, which his business is booming right now. His, you'll see there, it actually kind of zooms in. Look at that. Very engaged, very nice way to kind of like showcase it. And then his is get a quote as well. And it's ready to start a project, a little bit of urgency, a little bit of assertiveness. Boom, get a quote. Now for me, like we talked about earlier, a lot of different calls to actions I could potentially have, but I generally want people to go to my courses. So at the very bottom of my homepage, one thing that I recently added that really helped is to have a very vibrant section with a picture of me that is kind of overlapping to give it some life and some depth. And my main call to action is that I want people to build their dream web design business. That's how I help web designers. So in order to do that, the quickest way to go is to boom, view my courses and to start with a course. Or in this case, I'm actually mixing two calls to actions, one primary and one secondary, which is to join my coaching community. Now, I told you, if you have a lot of different potential call to actions with different customer types, I want to give you some tips on what to do because it's really challenging. Like I just showed you, you could have like a main call to action and then a secondary call to action, but ideally you would create bonus tip, which is some sort of funnel. So for example, if we go back up to my the hero section of my homepage, I realized personally that I have customers and students who are generally learning web design, starting and growing their business, or they're already at a place where their business is rocking and they want to scale and they want to take it to six figures and beyond. So what I learned to do was to create a funnel to meet everyone where they are. And each one of these funnels will go to a page where in this case, if you want to start and grow your web design business, this has an action plan for you that you can sign up for that's catered to that customer right where they are. So that has really helped me with conversions from my homepage. Another example, my friend Jimmy Rose with Content Snare, their main call to action is to start a free trial, but they went one step further and realized that they really appeal to a handful of different types of industries. So they have this funnel for people who are digital agencies, 
accountants or bookkeepers, law firms, higher ed, and mortgage and finance. Now, all these end up going to the same place, but it was just a way to funnel the right type of people to the right information for that main call to action to start a free trial. So that's my bonus tip. If you have a lot of different calls to actions, then just try adding some sort of funnel that will help guide them and meet the customers where they are. So I hope that these top seven tips for making better conversions via your homepage has helped. Again, there's a lot of different tips and principles out there. These are simply the seven that I found to be most effective that, as you see, a lot of my students are doing with great success. And I do want to mention this is all pulled from my design course. So if you've liked this video and you would like a little more and you would like a full, these are kind of the breadcrumbs, but if you want the full meal, all this information is pulled from my website design course, which has so much more in regards to design and conversion tips and all the principles and tactics and tools you'll need to fully build websites that convert, not only homepages that convert, but full websites that convert as a whole. So check that out. If you like this and you're ready for more, my website design course is open and available for you now. I hope you enjoyed this. Consider subscribing below and get ready for the next video that's going to be coming soon to help you build your dream web design business.